Hi, I'm Catherine from Richmond, Virginia, and welcome to Large Employer Qualified Plans. A retirement plan can either be qualified or non-qualified. To be qualified, a retirement plan must meet certain IRS tax requirements, and in return, it gets special tax advantages. In this section, we're going to be talking about the large employer qualified plans. We'll talk about the requirements for a qualified plan. We'll talk about the tax advantages of a qualified plan, and then we'll talk about four large employer plans. And those plans would be the corporate pension plan, the corporate profit sharing plan, the 401k plan, and the 403b plan. Finally, we'll talk about what happens if an employee has money in one of those qualified plans and then wants to leave that job. So first of all, what are the requirements for a qualified plan? Well, the plan must be for the exclusive benefit of the employees and their beneficiaries. The plan must be also formally written and communicated to the employees. Very importantly, it cannot discriminate in favor of those highly paid executives, officers, or directors. The plan must be permanent, and it must have a vesting requirement. And vesting refers to how long an employee must work for an employer before they have rights to all the money that is in their retirement plan. Any money that an employee puts into the plan on their own behalf is immediately vested and can go with the employee if the employee were to leave that job. However, those employer contributions may require that the employee work there for a certain number of years before the employee can also take that money with them if they were to leave that job. So those are the requirements for a qualified plan. What are the advantages? Well, first of all, those contributions made by the employer are tax-deductible expenses to the employer. So they can actually lower their current income taxes by making those contributions into the qualified plan. And even though that money is being put into the employee's qualified plan, it's not considered current taxable income for the employee. So that is pre-tax money that's being put into the plan. Once it's in the plan, it can grow tax-deferred. Tax-deferred means that the interest and the dividends being earned can be reinvested. So they can earn more interest and dividends so the money can compound faster and grow to have more at retirement. Now, it is supposed to be for retirement, which means if the employee takes a distribution before age 59 and a half, there would be a 10% tax penalty on what is called that premature distribution. And since the money in there is all pre-tax, both the contributions and the interest, none of it has been taxed, the IRS requires that the employee start taking distributions by age 70 and a half because that's when the IRS is going to get their taxes. If the employee doesn't begin those required minimum distributions at 70 and a half, there will be a 50% tax penalty on what the IRS says should be taken out of that account. So those are the tax advantages to a qualified plan. Now we're going to talk about those four large employer plans, the corporate pension plan, the profit sharing plan, the 401k plan, and the 403B plan. Let's take a look at that corporate pension plan first. It's the employer who makes the contributions into the corporate pension plan, and those are tax-deductible expenses for the employer. We say it's funded and maintained by the employer. There may be some provision for the employee also to make contributions into that plan, and the earnings do grow tax-deferred. The employee would have a 10% tax penalty if they start taking distributions before age 59 and a half, and there will be a 50% tax penalty if they don't start those distributions by age 70 and a half. A corporate pension plan is either going to be a defined benefit plan or a defined contribution plan. With a defined benefit plan, the employee knows how much they will be receiving from the plan once they retire, usually expressed as some percentage of their compensation. In a defined contribution plan, the employee knows how much is going into the plan on their behalf, 
However, they don't know how much they'll actually be receiving once they retire. So that is the corporate pension plan. Then we have the profit sharing plan. And the profit sharing plan is considered to be the most flexible plan because although profit sharing plans have to have contributions that are recurring and they are substantial, those contributions only have to be made in years in which there is a profit. The employer gets to make those tax deductible contributions to the plan and it goes into a profit sharing trust where the account grows tax deferred. If the employee takes a distribution before age 59 and a half, there would be a 10% penalty, and they must begin those distributions by age 70 and a half to avoid that 50% tax penalty. Now we're going to talk about the 401k plan. A 401k plan is also called a cash or deferred arrangement, CODA. And that's because the employee can either take the cash now as part of their salary or defer receiving that into the future. If they defer it, then it goes into a 401k plan, that's pre-tax contribution that's going into the 401k plan. A lot of times employers also make matching contributions into the plan, and those are tax deductible expenses for the employer. So that's pre-tax money going into the plan, and the earnings from the plan can grow tax deferred. There is a 10% penalty if the employee takes distributions before age 59 and a half, and there would be a 50% penalty if the employee doesn't begin those distributions by age 70 and a half. Now, finally, we have the 403B plan. The 403B plan is also called a tax-sheltered annuity, or TSA. With a tax-sheltered annuity, these plans are for not-for-profit, churches, public schools, what the IRS calls 501c3 organizations. The employee agrees to a salary reduction, also called an elective deferral. That means they're putting off some of their income into the future. That reduces their current taxable income. The employer then makes those contributions into the plan where the earnings can grow tax deferred. There would be a 10% penalty if the employee takes a distribution prior to age 59 and a half, and the employee must begin those distributions by age 70 and a half to avoid that 50% tax penalty. So we talked about the large employer plans, which include the corporate pension plan, the profit sharing plan, the 401k plan, and the 403b plan. Now, what happens if an employee has money in one of these qualified plans, but they end up leaving their job? Well, they can do something called a rollover. If an employee does a rollover, a check is made out to the employee from the plan. We say they take actual receipt of the money because the check is made out to the employee. The employee then has 60 days to get that money into another qualified plan, like an individual retirement account. If they don't get it into the plan within 60 days, the money's going to be added to their taxable income, and if they're not 59 and a half, there would be a penalty, a 10% penalty on that premature distribution. Well, the employee can avoid worrying about that if instead of a rollover, they do something called a direct transfer. If they do a direct transfer, they never take actual receipt of the money. The check is not made out to the employee. Instead, the check is made out to the new custodian of the qualified plan, like the new IRA. So that's what an employee can do and not have to worry about that 60-day limitation. So in summary, what we have talked about here are the qualified plans that are sponsored by large employers. We talked about the requirements for the qualified plan the tax advantages of having a qualified plan, and we talked about four large employer plans, the corporate pension plan, the profit sharing plan, the 401k plan, and the 403b plan, and finally we talked about what an employee can do if they leave one qualified plan to move their money into another qualified plan. So thank you for joining me to learn about large employer qualified plans.